I'm going to be talking to Mo Cabarro, who's the acting executive director of Accelerate. It's a newly launched alliance to support the development of a zero emission vehicle supply chain in Canada. So welcome to the interview, Mo. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, look, why don't we talk about just uh, general terms, what your organization is up to? Uh, why was it launched? So I think uh, there's been a lot of activity happening right now uh, on the conversation of zero emission vehicles. And, you know, Canada has a lot of potential um, to be a global leader in ZEV manufacturing. You know, we have the natural resources, a long history of manufacturing vehicles, uh, access to the U.S. market and the European markets. We have the rule of law and stability and clean energy to power it all. And many players have been engaged in exciting initiatives related to the ZEV supply chain from across the country. But... You know, what this alliance uh, uh, aims to do is bring those players together uh, from, the, from across the country and from the cross supply chain to really develop a national strategy so that we can have uh, a formulated plan to accelerate the development and capture the opportunity that is uh, the emerging ZEF supply chain. So uh, Canada already has a well-developed supply chain. I've done a couple of interviews with representatives of other organizations. I think there's 700 plus companies uh, mm -hmm. in Canada. Uh, what parts of the supply chain uh, need developing? So, I mean, like Canada has a really good uh, uh, vehicle supply chain, uh, automotive supply chain. But if we look at the emerging ZEP supply chain, there's a lot of components included in that uh, that we do not currently have. So like on the battery supply chain side, you know, there's cell manufacturing. We do not have significant cell manufacturing capacity currently. There's active materials manufacturing like cathodes and anodes. Uh, we do not have uh, anything at scale at the moment. Uh, the processing of the chemical precursors for the batteries, uh, you know, um, significant kind of motor uh, or electric powertrain components. Uh, we have some uh, great companies that are working in this space, but you know it's not it's not to the level of what we are able, what we are what could what we could be capable of in terms of actually achieving. So I think the idea here is that you know uh, looking at some of the existing supply chain, how do we make sure we future proof that as the transition happens to zero emission vehicles? And uh, the other component is uh, how do we get uh, uh, how to get a piece of the pie of these new exciting opportunities that are emerging on the battery side, on the power electronics, on the electric powertrain. Um, well, the, for, for many decades, uh, the Canadian industry has been tightly integrated with the, the American industry. And will that be a central feature of your strategy? Or is this an opportunity for Canada to strike out on its own a little bit and go in directions that maybe the US industry isn't or maybe develop Canadian firms or expand Canadian firms uh, that uh, don't have direct ties to the Americans? So I think, as you mentioned, uh, since, the US, since the auto pact and, and then after that NAFTA and the recently negotiated uh, CUSMA or USMCA, you know, the automotive industry in Canada has, been, uh, has benefited from being part of a highly integrated North American supply chain. You know, one of the main reasons for that integration has always been the efficiency that this can offer to industry players in both the, uh, the US and Canada. And uh, I think access to the U.S. market, like 90% of the vehicles we make here go to the U.S. Uh, so we have, we have access to one of the largest markets in the world. Um, and as the ZEF supply chain develops in North America, it's going to be especially important to maintain uh, that integration between the industries um, moving forward, because this is going to be uh, integral to competing with Europe and Asia. So I think, uh, you know, what we want to do with the Alliance is, you know, work closely with the, our U.S. counterparts like the Zero Emission Transportation Association uh, and also advocate uh, for policies that ensure the continued success of this integrated North American supply chain. Uh, but uh, obviously that doesn't mean that, you know, we don't want Canadian companies and Canadian homegrown companies uh, to arise in the supply chain. And that's why we're very proud to have, you know, companies such as uh, Lion Electric and New Flyer and Nova Bus that serve the American market, but are also, you know, proud to be manufacturing here at home. Um, your, uh, your organization intends to develop an industrial roadmap uh, to build out the supply chain. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, we, if we're looking at what's happening around the world, if we're looking at uh, some of the policies that have been developed in Europe and in the US, 
there's a clear uh, vision of where they want to get, how much of that opportunity they're, they're looking to capture, and how much investment is going to require, and what are the actions that are, they're going to require to be able to capture this opportunity. So for us, really, we, we see that Canada has opportunities within the ZEV supply chain. We need to do is we need to quantify them, we need to name them, we need to have a plan of how to work together, as I mentioned before, with the US to, to, to leverage our strength to capture some of those investment opportunities. And we need to ensure that the, the right policies and the right industry alignment is in place in order for us to capture uh, that opportunity because everybody else is doing that. So if we're not doing it, we're falling behind, we're, we're not acting proactively. The idea is we've generally been reactive when it comes to opportunities like this. Like, you know, there's been great opportunities that have arose recently with some of the electric vehicle manufacturing mandates coming to the uh, coming to Ontario with negotiations with Unifor, but it's been a reactive uh, element. Whereas what we want to do is be proactive, lay out a roadmap and start implementing it. Now, Mo, I, I've been reporting on electric vehicles and zero emission vehicles for you know years and years. And one of the things that uh, experts have been telling me for the last year to 18 months is how the industry and the technology has accelerated even faster than they had expected. It took a big leap forward during that time, I guess during the time of the pandemic. And I don't think that the average Canadian understands just how fast the electric vehicle uh, industry is developing and how quickly electric vehicles are likely to, you know, sort of push, begin to push out internal combustion engine vehicles from the marketplace. What's your take on that? It's a very good question, and I would 100% agree. I think we are at, we're starting to, at the cusp of that tipping point, right, in terms of technological uh, advancements to ensure that we have batteries that are not too costly, but they can provide uh, the performance requirements that most people would require of their vehicles. We're seeing that happen also on medium and heavy duty vehicles. We're seeing a lot of fleets recognize the opportunities associated with the savings they can capture from electrifying their fleets and getting fuel and maintenance savings. So there's a lot of um, fast paced activity happening in this space, but we're also seeing commitments from governments across the world to really uh, get to 100% zero emission vehicles by, in terms of sales by 2035. And that, that target has been, uh, has been adopted by many jurisdictions, including Quebec, uh, California, and even the Canadian government announcing uh, that earlier this year. So I think you're completely right. Um, this, it's a very exciting uh, time for zero emission vehicles, but that is why it's, it's especially important for us to have an industrial roadmap because things are moving quickly and the window of opportunity is narrow and it's closing in. And if we're not able to get in there as soon as possible, we might miss out on this opportunity to develop the supply chain in Canada. Final question, Mo. Uh, we know the you know the federal government has been promoting zero emission vehicles, and we know they've got a new mandate now for you know 100 of sales by 2035. But do they really get it? Like, are they doing the deep policy work behind the scenes that needs to be done so that we can catch up policy wise uh, to other uh, regions and countries? It's a very good question. Um, I, I believe that you know that's it's a, definitely a very positive signal to see that target move up. Uh, from where it used to be and seeing also some, uh, some signs that it could, it could be a mandated target as opposed to just a, a nice to have target where it was kind of what was the case. So I think that's definitely a positive signal that the government is committed to uh, move forward on ZEVs. What we hope to accomplish with this alliance is to ensure that they are seeing the, the industrial lens as something that could help Canadians uh, reach that goal, right? So we're seeing, we're, this is why the Alliance is gonna work on policy advocacy to ensure that the industry is informing government of the policies that can help build the ZEF supply chain and build, build the ZEF industry so that uh, you know, we can really achieve our GHG goals as well. Well, Mo, uh, good luck to your organization and to the industry. And uh, thank you very much for your insights. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.